Hello friends, welcome back to All and Law. And this is a medical video lecture, Microbiology. Microbiology. And this, today's topic of discussion is Clostridium difficile. Or difficile. Clostridium difficile. So guys, before starting a discussion on this important bacteria, I would request you to subscribe to our channel and please do share our videos with your friends. So whenever you think of Clostridium difficile, so remember this difficile, Clostridium difficile, just think of in a clay in for USMLE purpose, think of a patient is under the treatment for some diseases for pneumonia. Okay, and they say that later he developed the di diarrhea. Which of the following could be the cause for his diarrhea, right? So whenever there is a use of antibiotics and he develops a diarrhea, try to think of Clostridium difficile as a causative organism, okay? That is known as seromembranous colitis. So let's start a discussion on this. And before starting a discussion, please do subscribe to our channel and please do share our videos with your friends. Clostridium difficile. Okay, the important points over here is they are gram positive. Okay, they are rods, right? Right, they are gram positive, they are rods, and they are spore forming, spore forming bacteria. And the other important point is they are anaerobes. Anaerobes. These are the four important points you should know about Clostridium in general. Okay, so what's the reservoir of this? Is a human colon. Remember, reservoir is colon, human colon, or GI tract. What's the mode of transmission? It's endogenous, endogenous. Okay. Now let's talk about the pathogenesis. It produces two types of toxins, pathogenesis, toxin A and toxin B. The toxin A, as you know, toxin B is a cytotoxin, okay? You simply remember cytotoxin, cytopathic or cytotoxin, okay? The toxin A is enterotoxin, enterotoxin. Okay, that damages the mucosa leading to fluid increase. Okay, if this is the mucosa of intestine, it damages the mucosa over here, it damages here. Okay, and that leads to fluid loss and that leads to diarrhea. Okay, it also causes a toxin A, it also acts as a granulocyte attractant. Granulocyte attractant. Okay, right. So, what is the disease that it develops? It develops because of the use of specific antibiotics, clindamycin. Remember the antibiotics that are used in a hospitalized patient, that is a clindamycin. In your assembly, look for these antibiotics, cephalosporins, amox, and MP. ampicillins, okay? In USMLE, if they give the history that the hospital, the patient is hospitalized for the pneumonia and they started with the clindamycin and later after 3-4 days, he developed a diarrhea and they ask you which of the following could be the cause for his diarrhea to think of Clostridium difficile, okay? Because they form a known as colitis, that is pseudomembranous colitis. Pseudo membranous colitis. Okay, guys? That's it, right. So how do you diagnose it? It's a stool exam for a toxin production. Stool exam is really important because culture you cannot do because why? It's a part of normal flora, that's why, right. right? It will be present. Where you need to do stool culture for that, stool examination. Sorry, stool examination for toxin production. Like ELISA, cytotest, okay? What's the treatment? If, if, if it's a mild, leave it, discontinue the antibiotic, it will subside on its own. If it's severe, then try to use metronidazole or vancomycin, okay? Okay, guys?
Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm sure this video is really very helpful for your USMLE Step 1 examination and for USMLE Step 2 CK examination. Thank you so much for watching this video. Take care.